Welcome to another adventure, and it's a big one. Errol and I are gonna be transporting this 20-foot Connex up to the interior of Alaska, about 300 miles away on some pretty, pretty rough roads. It's gonna be about a seven hour trip each way. When we loaded this thing on our trailer, we actually used a mini excavator, so it made pretty short work of it. When we get there, we do not have a mini excavator or any sort of equipment. So I've tried to think of the best way to get this thing off the trailer. I believe I have all the gear we need. Let's take a look at what we're bringing with us. Okay, basic hand tools. We have two high lift jacks. We have a 12 ton bottle jack. We've got a strap, a big chain, and we've got a strong tree where we're going. So this is what we're gonna be using to get this Connex off the trailer. We're trying to keep this thing as light as possible since it already weighs a lot for our truck to pull. We've got a spare tire for our trailer, a second spare tire for our truck. Any tools we're gonna to need to change tires. We're just about done in here. We're gonna shut her up. So this may seem like a lot of work to haul a Connex, and it is. You can definitely pay someone to haul these things for you. In fact, that was the first thing we were gonna do. We called a tow truck company that hauls them, and it was gonna be $3,100, which was more than this Connex cost. So we decided to price it out doing ourselves. We were already using the excavator to work on our other property. We rented the trailer, we got it loaded up. We're gonna have to pay for gas and some things like that, but it's gonna be about half the cost for us to haul this thing up there by ourselves. We're ready to hook up the truck. Let's get the Tundra hooked up to the Connex. We're gonna get the airbags filled up on the truck. It's an aftermarket part. This one has them on the back axle and they can hold 80 PSI each. The back end of this thing is sagging pretty good with this heavy load. We're gonna start with 50 pounds. These airbags are pretty cool. They give you a better ride and they're gonna level out the back of the truck. You can actually see the truck move up when I put air in these things. We're starting at 50 PSI and we can adjust these depending on the, how the ride is. So I'm gonna bring a little air compressor and we can do that. We can always add more air or let some out. And I've already checked every single one of our tires. We're sitting good on air pressure, long trips like these. You really gotta take your time doing kind of like a pre-trip. One other thing we've done is we measured from the ground to the top of our Connex since it's just such a tall load. We wanna know which gas stations and everything we can fit in. We're pretty low, we're sitting at 11 feet right now. We've gotten a lot of questions on recent videos when we're traveling about this truck and this is our new to us truck. Well, it's semi new, we bought it a year ago. This is a 2016 Tundra. Our other truck, which we still have and we're still gonna keep is a 2002 Tundra. That truck we've had for dang, almost 10 years now. We bought it with 100,000 miles on it. It now has 303,000 miles. It has a V8, original motor, original transmission. It is an awesome truck. That's why we decided to buy another Tundra. We know that our old truck, the Black Tundra, is not gonna last forever. So when we found a good deal on this one, we picked this one up. We also wanted to go a little bigger so we could do stuff like this. This truck has a, a higher tow rating. The trailer in the Connex that we're gonna be towing is just under 8,000 pounds, which is way over the other Tundra's towing. We also wanted something that was a little safer. Like I said, bigger, we could fit more things in here. We put a custom Alaskan made camper shell on it. We're pretty much ready to go. We're gonna get our food loaded up. We're gonna get the dogs. It's gonna be Errol and I and the boys. And we're gonna make the long trek. We'll see you guys in the morning. It's 8 a.m. We're heading out. First stop, we're at the tire shop, unfortunately. Getting the tire fixed. We're getting there. Last night we realized that this tire was leaking. After I checked the air pressure, I noticed this one was a little low. It went from 50 to 30 in just a couple hours. Sprayed some soapy water on there. Found out it was the valve stem that was actually leaking. So it needed a new TPS sensor. We're here at the tire shop on probably one of the busiest days you can be here. People are getting all their winter tires changed over and it's a Saturday. But they got this done about an hour and a half. We're almost ready to hit the road again. Do 
doing pretty good so far. We're climbing through the mountains on this windy road. And our gas mileage is suffering. We just hit 7.8 miles to the gallon. Okay, it's our second little pit stop, letting the dogs out and run around, and I found what I believe is a shaggy mane mushroom. And this is an edible one. This one's old, it was sitting on its side, but that's the first time we've seen one of these. Pretty sweet, almost as sweet as Bo's jacket. Here. Oh, I thought it said 556. <laughs> 596? Oh, good thing I'm just topping us off though. So. Dang it. We made it. Okay, we got here just in time. Exciting stuff. It took us a while. It took us a long time because we made a lot of stops and we were driving very slow. Eric safely got us here with our Conics and there was three parts of this that were challenging, loading it up, transporting it. We got that all accomplished. We have to unload it, but we're saving that for tomorrow. We're tired. We're gonna get some rest, eat, and then tackle that first thing tomorrow. Good morning! You might be wondering where Eric and I are at right now. I know we have been a tad secretive up to this point and we are going to walk you through what may potentially be our new cabin and it is actually our new cabin and our new property but i'm not certain if we are going to be moving here in the future or exactly when we would be moving here or anything like that so i want to give you a little tour very exciting stuff eric and i actually looked at this property last year it's been a long process and we're finally up here we've been here a few times before but this is going to be our longest stay so we want to show you around Vanna's already settled in and so is Bo. Just the dogs with us on this trip, no, no Pepe Le Pew. This is a super small cabin, just like ours back home. It is a 20 by 25, I believe. It is D-log, so it's absolutely beautiful. The construction is honestly immaculate. It's, it's gorgeous, honestly, from the outside in and on the inside too. There's a lot of things that are actually very similar to our house, but then there are things that are quite a bit different. So we're going to go over that, but this is the general layout. So it's one big open room. It comes complete with the awkward door entrance. Unfortunately, we don't have like an Arctic entry or anything like that. That's something in Alaska or a lot of cold climates, maybe even tropical climates, I don't know. That would be very useful because you come right in and bam, you're already in the house. Here's the kitchen. Pretty cool, but it's really nice to have somewhere to put like all your boots, your jackets, all your gear. And this house doesn't quite have that. Neither does our one back home. So we just make it work. You will immediately find something different that we don't have at ours, which is a glorious kitchen table. This is really nice. Eric and I already sat down last night and had dinner. We actually don't sit down all that much to eat at home. I know that bamboozles some of you out there, but we, we don't mind standing to eat or we do sit on our couch. But this, this place is pretty cool because it does have a table. So we've got the kitchen back here. This property already has a well. It is completely off grid, just like ours, except for we're running a generator right now. That's how it's set up. They don't have solar here. So that is definitely something we're gonna be looking to in the future. There's a full size oven. Eric gets a huge kick out of this. Uh, I don't know if it's gonna work right now, but there's a light. <laughs> there's a bunch of stuff here already that you're probably noticing in, in Alaska. It is really common when you buy a property or a cabin that they come with furniture or some of the person's possessions and food and various things like that. So there's a lot of like plates and food and stuff like that here that the owner left us. We've got some beans in there, some tuna. Of course, most of it's expired as per usual. The kitchen is one big 
long countertop, which is pretty cool. I feel like there's a lot of counter space. The cabinets are really gorgeous in my opinion. I don't know what kind of wood they are, but they're outstanding. And back over here, you will find something pretty neat. Eric and I have lived out of a ice chest as our refrigerator for four years and so did the previous owner. So they were actually part-time here. They weren't full-time, but they have a little ice chest as their refrigerator, which is funny to me. So it's perfect. We're gonna walk around to this side of the cabin. The dog's beds are here already. We have a fireplace, it's a Blaze King. I think it's a guardian is what Eric was saying. I'm not quite sure of all the specs on that. Eric did a little bit of research. We think it was put, we think it was built in like 2010 or something like that. And this thing is powerful. It actually puts so much heat off that it kind of warped the floor a little. And it's really difficult to even stand this close to it, but it did keep the embers overnight, which is awesome. Ours back home doesn't do that that quite well. Because this house is just like one continuous floor, they don't have a loft. So the bedroom is not upstairs kind of like ours at home, which is really nice. That's where our computer workstation is. That's where we keep a lot of our clothes. And it's just kind of nice because that area doesn't have to always be like put together. This is the bedroom down here. So there's the, a twin, a full size bed right there. And I think that the person would just kind of close their curtains like that. So pretty neat. Ideally I would have a loft, but this house was just not built with a loft, but it was built with the crawl space. We're not going to go down there today, but there is probably like a three foot, maybe four foot crawl space down underneath the house. It has that foam concrete foundation down there. There is also a little Toyo stove in here and that's hooked up. I believe we can actually use that. The previous owner didn't use that. So there is no oil in the tank for it right now. That's definitely something we'd probably be looking to use in the future. They use massive logs when they were building this or crafting it. <laughs> And I'm not quite sure where they came from. I think they probably came a little bit further from this actual region. The trees aren't quite this big. And if there were, there's not that many with that big of a girth. This is probably the best part of the tour. Pretty amazing stuff. There's actually an indoor bathroom at this cabin. I don't, is there a light switch in here? Oh yeah, we can turn that on. This house has a water heater and a pressure tank, a little sink, a little shower, and a toilet, of course. Everything has been winterized. Eric and I had that done because this area is getting really cold temperatures already. They're quite a bit colder than where we're at or where we're located actually. Since we will not be up here this winter, maybe we'll make trips, but we're not living up here. We needed to have it winterized. Otherwise you definitely risk, I mean, you probably would have major damage to some of the pipes and things like that. This room right here is kind of amazing. We are used to an outdoor shower. We don't mind sh showering outdoors, but because it's colder here, this is definitely gonna be really nice. There's like a massive mirror. There's an actual bathroom here. Back home, we use our kitchen as our also our bathroom. So it's, it's kind of interesting. So when we walked in and saw this light and this huge mirror, we were both kind of like, whoa, what's going on here? <laughs> we didn't even know what we looked like anymore. There's awesome views out of all the windows. This particular place is amazing because it is on a very large lot. It is on 40 acres. So that's massive for me and Eric. I'm sure you've heard us mention space. We're limited on space, you know, limited because of this reason, such and such. And so I feel like this place is just like the sky is the limit with the land, so to speak. Obviously the, the cabin is a little bit smaller, but we are both used to living in a smaller space. So this one, I believe it is actually a little more square footage than we have back at home, or maybe it's really comparable with the loft and the lower floor. So we're, we're fairly used to it. This is a very exciting time for us. We're having a lot of thoughts and things we're thinking about, plans we're talking about. So we will see how things go through. I don't exactly know our exact time frame of when we're gonna be starting this transition, but that's the plan, that's the hope. And we're just really, really thrilled and excited for this. Earlier this morning, Eric found out where he wants to put our Connex. So I think we're going to head outside and do that and give you a little look around the outside of the house too. Ooh, it is definitely getting chillier. This place is a lot colder than where we live. And this place is absolutely awesome. We're having a really good time out here. It came with another little generator that runs the whole system here. It's one of the same generators that we actually have at home. And this is it. This is the outside of the cabin. It is like Ariel mentioned, D-logs. And these are eight inch D-logs and they're actually grooved or notched. So they fit together. 
it's a it's a pretty cool design it's an extremely high quality design and she mentioned that this is on a foam concrete foundation and it is you can kind of see it this is the foam and then there's concrete inside there and a footer down on the bottom that's also concrete our cabin at home isn't it's up on piers and beams and this is going to be superior for insulation and being able to actually have a crawl space that's kept warm when you're running like water lines and anything you want to put in there so it's pretty cool it's definitely a nice solid foundation when you're walking around this house it just feels like extremely solid there's not much that's here so there's the little cabin oh we have our propane tanks here these run the uh hot water heater in there it's like a traditional hot water heater we might change that out for an on-demand one and then these run the stove and then back here the only other things we have which are actually really nice is we have a wood shed which is almost full of wood and then we just have like a big shed and that thing's awesome they're both awesome and they're up on skids so we can pull those around and we can move them wherever we want to put them and we found where we're putting our connex at least for now so now comes the challenging part we're gonna hook it to a tree and see if we can pull it off the trailer The plan is to get the Connex emptied, which we just have done, and we're gonna hook a chain and a strap to the back of it, hook it to that quaking aspen tree that's about 20 feet behind the Connex, and then I'm gonna to try to put the truck in four low and just drive forward, and hopefully it'll pull the Connex off the back, set the back down, and then we're gonna to have to worry about the front. If that doesn't work, then we're gonna to have to come up with the plan B. Okay. okay, the main thing is going to be like pulling this thing straight, you know what I mean? As straight as we can. in the air though these high lift jacks are awesome they can lift i think seven thousand pounds each and we got two of them but they're tippy once you start getting them really high like that so we're going to try to just lower it lower it one click on each side get it down Okay, hold on. Let's get 
our uh, I can't believe we got it done. This was pretty wild, wild idea that Eric wanted to do, but it actually worked. It actually worked really, really well. And you know, these Connexes have over doubled in price since Eric and I have moved here. To transport it, it was going to be the same cost that we actually purchased this one for, which is pretty reasonable. However, we were able to do this for a fraction of the price. We got the experience and who knows, maybe, maybe we'll do it again in the future. I don't know. And I was j using this jack without a block of wood under it. That jack would sink into the ground. The ground is so solid here, it's like doesn't sink in. It doesn't even sink in. I'm lifting a, you know, a 4,000 pound conex, and it's not even going in. Oh gosh! Dang it! Wow, there's uh, a lot of wood in here, hun. Dude, you're really trying to get a squirrel, aren't you? I really like the, the... Let's see, you gotta do plywood on the back or OSB on the back. Two, three, four, fours. He's really, dude, it's okay. It's kind of dark in here. Checking out the other shed on the property. I've already been here a few times, but it's got one thing that's pretty cool. It's back in here. And this is like a uh, insulated room for a generator. And there's a generator plug there. This is probably like 60 feet from the cabin. There's also another plug just right outside of the cabin that you can hook up to. But in the winter, you can use this. You can stick your generator in here, keep it warm, keep it quiet. You just plug her in, you can run the house. This is kind of cool. A lot of insulation in there. There's random stuff in here, oils for the generator, varnishes and stains for the cabin, a little shop vac, some tools and screws and stuff, but I'm telling you, having storage space, especially in a place where it snows, is just amazing. So pretty happy to have a little shed out here. Bandit's shoving his face in the ground. He found out where some squirrels have been going underground or stashing their food or something. This is an extremely cool property. We really like it here. A lot of it is dense forest, kind of like what we're in now, like a spruce forest. And we came out here in the winter. It's absolutely beautiful. The health of the land here, you can just tell it's just healthy land. All the trees are just alive and well. But we, we really haven't had a chance to explore it a lot. So we're just kind of walking around the property, checking out our property lines and and checking out our trees and just this beautiful land. It's really cool here. Look at him, he's... I don't think we should let him. He's like full on in. Oh. Yeah, see, he's gonna... The squirrels are not gonna... Look at this. Look how much food these squirrels have. Why that did this fall off? crazy. They took them off, I'm pretty sure. No, they eat them when they take them off. You don't think that maybe the wind dropped these? These are like in a pile. Like something piled them up. That's crazy. Look at all those pine cones. That's a particularly tall one. That's probably 50 feet tall. Whoa, he's really big. When Eric and I came here in the winter, we did a little jaunt around and there was the most animal tracks I have ever seen in my life, probably from small critters and such, but they were just everywhere. And so Bandit is, I mean, I don't even know. He's freaking out because he just smells so much out here. And my favorite thing about these trees, I know Eric and I really love them, but is when they're living like this, their needles actually collect the snow because they're not all dry and brittle. So they get really fluffy and puffy when it snows. It is just absolutely, absolutely gorgeous. I found a really cool pot over here. See the spiders in here? Wait. Um, That's like a baster. See the spiders? But look at the amoeba growing on them. Yeah, it's sick. Isn't that weird? That's a really cool pot. That's what I said too. 
I could use that to change my oil. Whoa, is it actually meant to be tie-dye or did Yeah, it it's like swirled. That's an old turkey baster. Yeah, you don't have to use that for oh, he's right there. basting turkey, right? He's right there. Oh, I see him. I see him. For some reason, they like that area. It's like they're... they're there we go. We're good. Okay, okay. That's, that's a considerable amount. What are you going to find out there? Uh, chimney. Sweet. Oh, it's a chimney. Yeah, two of them with all the extensions and everything. This wood and this wood shed is very nice. So when, at our cabin, when we burn firewood, all the firewood that we burn, if it's spruce, is standing dead beetle kill. So these trees are already dead. We cut them down, they're already dried and ready to burn. These trees were once live and it's just, it burns a lot better. It's dry, so it's been seasoned. My guess is this wood has been in here for years, but Super cool wood shed keeps this wood really dry and then this also has like some plywood doors That you can put up like in the winter so you don't get uh, snow and stuff blowing in there So pretty cool. We think it's probably gonna hold about four cords of wood and we might need something a little bigger, but Glad to have some nice dry firewood. We're getting a fire started. We're gonna work on a good little dinner for us Finding interesting things at this cabin already, and this is probably the coolest thing that we found. This is Ariel's favorite. Look at that. It's a salmon cutting board. It's a Chinook. It's a Chinook. It's got, I don't know if that's like cast steel or something. You got the head and the tail. I think it's awesome. And this is awesome because Ariel's fixing dinner and we didn't bring a cutting board, so this is gonna be great. Get it cleaned up. Oh, you actually like touched it in digitally and stuff like that? Yeah. Whoa. I'm freaking out right now. You're using electricity to do this? No. Oh. Yeah. I read to use the oven. You need electricity to electronically do it. But to use the stove top, you don't. Let's see how that turns out. Preheating. Check out these neat plates. Really glad he left these behind for us. Super cool, we're gonna be eating dinner on those. We have sweet potatoes, we've got some parsley and sage and butter, and we forgot the rice for our stuffed bell peppers, but they have salmon and a whole bunch of other stuff and keeper cheese in there, so they look pretty good. We're gonna eat dinner. Well, good morning. It's our last day at the new cabin. We actually stayed yesterday also, but we just spent that day exploring, cleaning up things around here, walking the property, kind of planning things out how we want to do things. Now we're just making a little breakfast, getting ready for the long ride home.
we're all ready to head out. We had a nice trip up here. I'm glad we spent that extra day. I think it's gonna be an easy trip on the way home. It's still a very long journey, but we don't have the Connex with us this time. We do plan to come back out here this winter. I don't know how many times it'll be. And I also don't know our future plans for this place and all of our other places, but we're very excited about it. And hopefully we will be out here sooner than later. We'll see you next time.